Good day guys, Michael here. Welcome back to 32 Builds. We're in part 5 of the Datsun build. Today we continue on the engine block and be looking at doing some work on the cylinder head and getting that all bolted in, as well as the transmission, along with a new flywheel and a clutch. I removed the head in a previous video, making sure to follow the correct bolt removal sequence as stated in my user manual. The first step today will be to unbolt the rocker shaft and disassemble the head for cleaning. Onto the next step, removing the valve springs. This proved to be a little bit tricky without a valve spring compressor. Each spring has two keepers wedged in between the spring caps and valve stems. They sit in a groove towards the top of the valve stem and hold the valve spring in place. I tried a couple of methods here to remove them, including general agitation and finding ways to compress a spring and extracting keepers with a magnet. They seemed to work, but it took about half an hour to get two springs out. So I decided it was best for me to go down the road and get myself the correct tool. With all the valves removed, I can move on to cleaning the aluminium casting. Cleaning the head gasket surface, I'm using good old WD-40 and Scotch-Brite. You don't want to damage the head gasket surface with any harsh materials or chemicals. Cylinder heads warp with heat or incorrect torquing down of the head bolts. So I'm using a precision straight edge with a feeler gauge to measure the flatness. Though the user manual states that the distortion limit is 0.1 of a millimeter, I'll start feeling around with a 0.04 millimeter feeler gauge. I was happy to find out that there were no dips on the surface even with my smallest feeler gauge. Otherwise I would have had to send in my cylinder head to get machined flat. This is the only wash plug on the cylinder head. It's totally rusted through and will be replaced with a new brass one. I give the cylinder head a nice hot bath while I go tidy up a bit. The baking soda didn't really do anything in the end. After a quick hose down, it's time to continue cleaning all the surfaces. Any unfinished surfaces I'll brush clean with a brass brush and block sand the flat surfaces excluding the gasket head surface. The manifold mating surface had a couple of pits from corrosion so I wanted to get those fixed up and since the gasket here uses gasket sealer I'm sure it doesn't have to be flat to the 0.1mm. Using degreaser and a scotch brite pad, I tried my best to clean the tops of the combustion chamber. You don't want to damage the valve seats with hard metals or harsh chemicals. They make a perfect seal with the valve to make sure the combustion chamber is getting the right amount of air and exhaust pressure at the right times. With a piece of rubber hose to protect the valve stems, I put the valves in a drill chuck to clean it with scotch brite. I let these sit in carby cleaner for a bit and the drill makes it that much easier with how hard it is to clean off burnt carbon. Same as the valve seats, taking care not to remove any material from the valves. With those nice and clean, I'll move on to lapping the valves. This is so that the valve and seat make a perfect seal. I'm using a specialized cutting compound that increases in grit as it grinds. The finer it gets, the better the seal. You can hear the sound change as you lap the valves. These suction sticks are pretty annoying, but I eventually got the hang of it. The goal was to get a visibly solid band close to the lip of the valve. They're pretty easy to see as the valves come with a polished finish from the factory. Moving on, I'm giving the exhaust ports a bit of a sand to smoothen down the casting seam. This will make air less turbulent traveling through the port, but mainly I just wanted to do it to make it easier to clean. The 
new earth plug goes in, and then I install the thermostat housing. Now time for reassembly. This tool is amazing. Before I bolt the cylinder head in, I've got to prep the gasket surface on the main block and clean the carbon off the piston tops and combustion chambers. After torquing down the head bolts in three stages following the correct sequence, I'm going to do the valve clearances and then seal everything up. This is especially important as I've lapped the valves making them sit a little lower in their seats. If you'd like to see the detailed procedure, let me know in the comments below and I can possibly whip up a quick one for the channel. Since the top of the motor is done, time to move on to the tranny. This shifter has way too much play in it. Turns out, Pushing inside has totally disintegrated and become one with the grease. I'm replacing it with a brand new solid brass bush. fabricating a high-tech jig out of processed tree to 
help swap out the old release bearing with a new one. If your transmission winds with the clutch pedal depressed, this is probably the culprit. It sounded like I ran over a duck every time I shifted gears. I'm going to grease up all the contact points in the bell housing to prep for reassembly. Watch out because over greasing the shaft splines could end up in grease getting flicked up onto your clutch making it slippery. I don't want that. Moving on to the receiving end, time to switch out the rear main seal. I initially had a bit of trouble getting this out as I didn't have the specific tool, but what ended up working for me was to drive a screw through the seal and lever it out with vice grips. I know there's a metal ring on the inside I could grab onto, I just had to note the length of the screw and the thickness of the seal to make sure I didn't penetrate too deep and scratch the metal behind or beside. I wasn't going to change a pilot bushing, but it seems like this one's had a bad day. Not sure how, but either way, I'll put a new one in. To get it out, I'll pump it full of grease, push in some paper towel to make a seal, and hammer it in with a small socket that fits inside the bushing. The pressure ends up pushing the bushing out from behind. Well, I've still got the chance, I'll torque down the crankshaft pulley bolt. I need the crankshaft not to move and I won't have another opportunity to do this until the motor is back in the car. Separator plate goes on, then flywheel, then clutch and pressure plate. I ended up losing some footage because I'm a silly boy, but I did lock tight everything and torque it down to the specified torque. Especially important for the flywheel bolts because they're known to work their way out and give you a bad day. Back on the dolly. In the next episode, I'll paint the cross member and bolt it up. I'll also give the carbies a good clean and maybe even get the motor started up here. Stay tuned and subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. Even better, click the notification bell to be notified of my next video. Please leave a like if you want to help out the channel. I'm having heaps of fun bringing out these videos. Hopefully soon I can get started with some bodywork. Till next time, peace.